Hello, this is Sian. Welcome to another video. Today we are doing another another video in the third book of my Clockwork Chronicles series. This is book three, Sacrifice for Freedom. We are on chapter 37. Due to the fact, as you saw, we, um, we have streaming problems. So, somehow, I'm late, just wasn't working today, so I was like, alright, enough of that. I'm tired of trying and trying and failing and failing. Do the need a solution to the books. Even though originally I didn't do them because they didn't get enough views. Now looking back, it's like, people are actually interested in these stories. And they've actually been watching back on previous books. So I'm like, okay, maybe these stories won't be so bad in chapters. Sure, you'll miss the interaction part, but you can always ask questions in the comments, and I can easily answer them for you. If you have any questions about anything, feel free to leave them in the comments. Yeah. And, yeah, I'll be reading each chapter, 37, 38, 39, and 40. I'll do the short stories, and then we'll go on to book four. I might do chapters. It's like, it might be easier for me. Since school will be starting and I'm cl collabing with other people, starting to collab with more people, I've just got to be mindful that maybe videos will be fine. For now. <sighs> yeah. So, we should probably get to it. And I keep kicking over my water bottle. <laughs> Jeff 37. Sam never expected to have things go so wrong so fast. He spent all day trying to reassure his friend that they wouldn't let anything happen, that they would be ready whenever the men would strike again. Sure, the copter was pretty scary and uncertain, but they had managed to just find it without any trouble. Everything seemed to be going pretty good, well, <laughs> until everything changed, of course. The boy had been talking with his friends Having a fun time. Not even... Not even thinking about any thoughts that something bad could happen. After all, Stampy wouldn't be alone in his room. He had Barnaby. And everything he had been fine that afternoon. When he checked in it on his friend to make sure everything was okay. What could have possibly gone wrong during that time? Everything. They had been talking about ideas to better ensure that their friend would be safe when they heard the sound of fires. First, the boy didn't think anything of it till he noticed the pattern. Pattern until he knew all too well that he had talked to these especially for emergencies. Something's wrong, the boy said, cutting everyone off by surprise. How do you know? Squishy asked. You hear the fireworks, right? The boy asked. That's just because he's having fun, I said casually. Sam shook his head. No, it's not. It's a distress call. And one I've taught him to use only in emergency. Suddenly, fireworks were drowned out by the sound of a copter. It sent a shudder through his spine. The boy instantly stood up and turned to his friends. Nettie, can you see if we can contact Dan and tell him we may need backup? Everyone else needs to come with me. You sure? Nettie asked nervously. Really fancy being alone if those men are running around. Fair point, Martin added, nodded. I'll stay with Nettie to make sure she's safe. You two look for Stumpy. None of you are going anywhere, a voice said by the doorway. The boy looked and immediately extended a sword, knowing who this man was. Instantly. You recognize me, don't you? The man sneered with a smile. What did you do to Stumpy? The boy demanded. Oh, I oh, sent him in on one trip, take a trip to his ultimate death, the man said casually. No! Nettie cast in horror as Martin pushed her behind him. Where to? the boy asked. Nowhere. Not where. Oh, the man sneered with a gold laugh. Who do you think? The boy could see Nettie's squishy faces grow pale and realization hit them. The boy's eyes sparked with anger and anticipation. 
participation. We'll stop him. That's why I'm here, to stop you, the man said with a cold chuckle. I've got this, Martin told the boy. Stampy needs you right now, both of you. Okay, boy not, Sam nodded. Just be careful. Don't worry, we will. The man said with a small smile. They lunged at the man, who shouted out in surprise, not expecting to see the man come in so fast. The boy took the opportunity to grab Squishy's hand and run out the door over the man and down the stairs. Which way do we need to go? Stickling asked. The only place that's big enough for a copter and enough room for Mr. A to do... Mr. A to create expectable. The boy said. Oh, she said, nodding with understanding. Come on, we need to hurry then. Indeed we do, the boy replied. As he ran out of the house and down the path, towards the park where he was almost certain it was it was that it was where his friend had been taken to. Sure enough, as they ran, they began to hear the sound of a, the copter overhead. Do you think he's in there? she asked, noticing what the boy was seeing. He has to be, the boy said determinedly. It's a fast way to travel, said short short distance off. Ironic, just how easy it is to follow, she mused. You're telling me I ran for miles with my brother to try to track down to save my friends after Gerald betrayed us. The boy said matter of factly. She smiled. Maybe that's why you're in such good shape. <laughs> the boy smirked, but steered his attention back to the task at hand. Stampy was in trouble. He needed their help. And soon, because if Mr. A got what he wanted, then there would be nothing left to save. He couldn't let that happen. Neither of them could. So the boy kept running, keeping an eye on the copter. As they neared the park, but as they neared it, he pulled his friend down, hiding behind the wall, to the park, near one of the four entrances. They watched in silence as the copter landed by the bruises plot of land from them, blocking that exit between the two gardens. They watched as the rotors slowed to a stop. Silence following as the door opened. They watched as their friend was being pushed out of the copter bound by rope as he was led to the center of the park, forced to his knees. The two men stood on either side of him. Stampy seemed to be unharmed by the most part. No. Okay. They stood there in silence, nothing really happening until the boy heard footsteps behind them. As he snuck further into the shadows, pulling Squishy with him, he saw a familiar man walking alone towards the park, towards their friend. He was Mr. A. He looked confident and tall in the way he held his posture and stride. It wouldn't be easy trying to stop them, but it didn't mean that they couldn't. <sighs> Sam swallowed as the man approached the cat, who was forced to look up as his eyes widened. There was fear in Sven's eyes as he took his enemy in. Will everyone be here shortly? Short, shortly. Shortly? The man asked the man. Holding the cat in place. The man nodded. I am assuming so, sir. They've really been looking forward to this day. Good. The man said with a smile. As the boy's blood ring went cold again, he realized what the men were talking about. That was why there had been no threat for the past few days. They had planned everything behind the scenes together to make a point to finally give what those who thought he was a traitor a chance to get to see him to get what he deserved. This really isn't good, the boy said quietly. What do you suppose we do? Stickling asked, just as softly. I don't know, but I'm working on it, the boy said. You have any ideas? No, sorry, she said sadly. Just seeing him up there, all alone with all those people up there. I wouldn't want to kill him. Sam nodded. But if this is going to be some spectacle, maybe he needs an attorney. <laughs> She asked, partly confused. Everyone else wants to kill him. Stan, he went. Who's going to defend him? Oh, she said quietly, nodding her head. <laughs> Why are we are at the court of law? This is not legal. <laughs> the boy bit his bottom lip as he watched Mr. A stepped closer to the cat. His friend was shaking his head slowly. As the boy, as the man whispered something to him, 
Finally, he spoke out loud. It's good to see you again, Snappy Cat. Please, you can't do this. There has to be another way, the cat pleaded, shaking his head. There is no other way, the man sneered. The cat swallowed and shook his head again, and the boy could see tears in his friend's eyes. He didn't know that they were here. What had the men done to make him appear so hopeless? Did he fear that they couldn't get to him in time? But as the moment passed, nothing happened. The man sighed. Can't wait any longer. The more we wait, the more chances his friend will get here and stop us. Yes, sir, one of the men said. That question. The boy watched as the man extended a sword. The cat winced. Looking up in horror as the man loomed over him. I really, I've really been looking forward to this day, cat. The man sneered. You should have done this months ago. Before anyone even knew that you existed. Before you even could give anyone hope. Now, I suppose it's the best possible moment to crush death. Well, it's blooming. Oh, but it can't grow. It can't wither and die. Oh. The cat whispered hoarsely, shaking his head as he looked away from the man. The man lifted his the cat's chin for it to come to look at him. It's too bad you won't get to see what I do to all the other YouTubers as I destroy each and every one of them. The man sneered. To finally destroy every trace of them. And make sure that your kind is nothing more than a legend that best forgot. A story that never existed in the first place. No longer a burden to us. Please. Can't. The cat said, disciplining a sob. The man kicked him hard in the stomach as he cried out in pain. Falling to his side, the boy could see him shaking, sobbing in pain and fear. But as the cat's eyes lifted up to the man, the pain seemed to fade for just a moment. The cat stared. I believe I've already won this fight. Cat, it's a small battle for you. You little insignificant life. The man sneered. After months of trying, I could finally succeed in destroying you. Don't worry. I'll make sure it's as painful and agonizingly slow as I can possibly can be. I'm not, I'm not afraid of you. The cat choked out, choking in pain when the man kicked him again. You won't win. But I already have done that too, the man said confidently. You have no cause to protect you. No friends here to fight for you. You will die alone, just like you should have months ago. Like you kind deserves. I don't, we don't deserve this, the cat said, gasping in pain as the man kicked him for the third time. This time, harder than the last. The cat coughed and squirmed, squirgling, struggling against the, his paws. Stay still, cat, or it'll be far worse for you. The man sneered, reading his blade. No, the cat said, his voice shaking, his fear and despair. Yeah? Squishy whispered at the boy. Yeah. The boy nodded, but the cat screamed, his blade hurtling towards him, but the boy lunged for the man, ready to do whatever it took to stop the man from hurting his friend. Unfortunately, we're going to have to end that. So there. This is chapter 30, 37. We will have chapter 38 later. That is the problem with these kind of things. We get cliffhangers like this. You gotta wait until the next chapter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. But I don't want to go overboard. I'm already at the 13 minute mark. Yeah, and I don't know how long 38, 39, or 40 will be. So we're gonna have to end that there. If you have any questions, thoughts, ideas, be sure to leave them in the comments below. And if you really need to know, there's a book for, so if that helps any. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy. Bye.